Hello, my name is Jim Keller. I'm a professor of pharmacy, medicine, and oncology out of the University of Texas at Austin and the Health Science Center in San Antonio, Texas. Today I want to talk about serotonin 5-HT receptor antagonists and their use in chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting, also referred to as CINV. This slide shows you the mechanism of action of the 5-HT3 antagonists. Again, as you can see here, that these drugs have both a central and a peripheral pathway mechanism. The primary pathway is peripheral. They act at the release in the enterocomyphin cells of serotonin out of the GI tract, the mucosa. They block that release in the activation of the vagus nerve, which then innervates the chemotherapy trigger zone, the CTZ. Once that's activated, it then stimulates the vomiting center, causing vomiting. There's also a central mechanism that can occur, and it can delay, again, block the CTZ and vomiting center centrally. This next slide, again, shows you a little bit more the detail in the GI tract. Shows that a release from the enterocomyphin cells shows that the blocking of that release will stop the transmission of the vagus nerve up to the CTZ. So the real blocking comes at the cellular level in the GI tract of the mucosal cell, the enterocomyphin cell. Here's the central activity as we showed. There can be also direct central activation of vomiting directly into the vomiting center and the CTZ. Here again, serotonin can block the release of serotonin directly in the central nervous system, although the primary action of, of the 5-HT3 antagonist is peripherally. So let's look at the effects, the anti-emetic effects of using these 5-HT receptor blockers, either with or without dexamethasone. If you look at this study by the Italian uh, anti-emetic group, you can see that with granisetron, which is a first-generation 5-HT3 antagonist, the Complete protection from nausea and vomiting, the bottom line here, shows that with dexamethasone alone is basically almost equivalent to granisetron. And when you put the two drugs together, you get a significant increase in antimatic effect than either drug by itself. This, again, led to the standardization of a 5-HT3 given with, a, with dexamethasone as a routine administration because of this additive effect of the two drugs together. This slide just summarizes all the various studies that have been done, and again, it shows that the response is better with 5-HT3 plus dexamethasone than 5-HT3 alone. So as I said, in almost every guideline today, the standard of care for a two-drug regimen is a 5-HT3 antagonist plus a cortical steroid, and typically that's dexamethasone. This next slide will show the, the clinical effects of palinocitron, which we consider a second-generation 5-HT3 antagonist due to its delayed effect, versus a first-generation 5-HT3 receptor antagonist. You can see in the acute phase, there's not much different because acutely the 5-HT3 antagonists work basically the same. So in the delayed phase, you can see here, after that first 24 hours, that uh, the palinocitron shows its advantages over the first generation 5-HT3, and that then is seen in the overall response. You see the, the advantages of the palinocitron. So the 5-HT receptor antagonists, if you look on this slide, we kind of summarize the first generation agents, ondansetron, granisetron, and dilacetron. The other agents listed there are both from Asia and Europe, and they're not available here in the States. These are effective agents for acute nausea and vomiting. They're used again in combination with dexamethasone routinely. The second generation 5-HT3 is called palinocitron. Its difference is it has delayed activity, where the first generation, as they're called, typically don't. There are extended formulations of these agents. We have a granisetron extended release sub-Q injection, and there's also a transdermal granisetron patch. So there's different delivery methods also for the 5-HT3 antagonist. So in conclusion, CINV is mediated both through a peripheral and central release of serotonin. The serotonin receptors actually work primarily for acute nausea and vomiting. 
There's some delayed, but only for the second generation agent, palinositron. Dexamethasone, as we said earlier, is typically always added. It gives you an additive effect. So in almost every guideline I'm aware of, the standard of care for a two-drug regimen is a 5-HT3 antagonist and dexamethasone. And finally, for this class of agents, there also are alternative delivery systems and methods available. We have both the patch, the extended release patch, and now the extended release sub-Q injection that can provide a 5-HT3 antagonist for a protracted length of time. With that, I want to thank you for your time.